Okay, so the first thing that I'll do is create a geometry network. I'll call it sim. Uh, I'll color it. Let's dive inside. And now I'll create a file node to bring in our headphone geometry. Um, I'll look for the headphone. And yeah, this is our geometry. And now we have it in our setup. Uh, this is looking nice. Let me just turn the background to gray. Yeah, this is looking nice. So the next thing that I'm going to do is create a convert node uh, just to make sure that everything we have here is a polygon. And then I'll use a reverse node to fix the normals here. This is looking nice and what we can do now is use a transform node. I'll change the size to 0 0.05 just to make it more realistic. Okay, this is looking nice as you can see. The next thing that I'm going to do is create a let's let's create a peak node and what the speak node does is it moves the geometry in its normal direction. Okay, but before that, maybe I should just create a null node, call it geometry n, geo, geo n. I'll connect the speak to this and let's now move the geometry in the normal direction by 0 0.0035. And now if you, if I template this, template this now you can see that we have our original geometry and now we have a peak geometry which is moved a bit in the normal direction okay uh, okay so this is peak and now I'm going to use a remesh node I'll change the target size to 0 0.05 0 0.2 0 0.02 and we have 61,978 points here let me just first change the background to dark and yeah this is looking much better now okay so we have our remesh geometry what I'm going to do is we want to fracture this geometry so using a edge fracture um, and this edge fracture I'm going to let me in, increase the initial pieces to 100, turn this on. And yeah, now you can see that our headphone geometry has been fractured into multiple pieces. If I use exploded, uh, I'll have to change it to piece. Now you can see this is our exploded geometry. Uh, in the edge fracture, so we have of 100, 100 initial pieces, but I'll just bring it down to its default value, which is 10, or maybe I'll bring it to one later. So, or actually, I'll just bring it to one and scatter. So we have scattered thousand points, and I'm going to create uh, curve geometries, which with the help of which we will be able to fracture of a geometry so the first create circle and this circle I'll put it in the YZ plane and Devon divisions to 30 and this is looking nice um, I'll use a I'll use a carve node because if you see that this circle is closed we want to open it so let me just turn it on yeah we have a carve node I'll turn on the seam U, seam V, and seam U is going to be 0, and seam V will be around 0 0.49. Yeah, okay, this is looking nice. Yeah, I'll use a resample node now, and I'll change the length to 0 0.01, and I'll change the 
I changed it to subdivision curves as well. Now I'm going to use a transform node. Um, and then after that, I'll use this curve and I'll copy this curve to all those points. So let me use a copy to points node. I'll connect it to the respective inputs like this and yeah. Now we have our curves. Each curve is instanced on points. So this is what we are getting um, in the uniform scale. Yeah, if I decrease it, I'll play with the values here. And let me just make it more 0 0.25. Or maybe I'll increase it this looking okay but maybe maybe I should maybe I should rotate it a bit and play with the transformation here before I set it up to copy to points and move it up a bit and also maybe in the negative Z direction okay so this is looking this is looking nice uh, what I'm going to do now is I'll I'll use this <coughs> geometries and attach it to edge fracture and as you can see all of our curves are now being used as a fracture curves to fracture our geometry here and as you can see our headphone has been fractured let me just let me just increase the size of it to 0 0.36 okay so this is looking nice and uh, as you can see uh, we have our headphone geometry what and in the points we have around 100,000 points 108,000 points let me explode it I'll use a piece attribute to explode and uh, yeah as you can see this is our geometry that is looking nice and now we can move ahead okay so now that we have our fractured geometry for our headphone we can move ahead and I'll use a transform node and I'll move it in the positive Z direction a bit. Maybe I should just completely keep it at around here. Actually, yeah, this is looking nice. Okay. This isn't actually going to do anything, but uh, what I had initially thought was I was going to move the geometry in the complete positive, positive Z direction, but let it be there. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'll just create a I'll create a vellum cloth constraint. So vellum cloth constraint is and I'll attach it to vellum solver. In the vellum solver, what I'm going to do is I'll create a collider as well. So we are going to use our original geometry, call it null, call it collide, collide, and connect it to the colliding geometry here. And I think I'll have to copy this transform here. And okay, now this is looking nice. In our vellum solver, come to forces and change it to zero. Uh, we do not want any force here. And inside, what I'm going to do is I'll use a pop wind and I'll change connect it to force and I'll change the direction to minus five for wind velocity. Okay. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'll come to visualization 
and turn off the show collision okay and maybe increase the sub steps to 4 for proper quality and I'll change the frame range also now if we run it let's run the flipbook and let's see what we are getting okay so now we have our flipbook and as you can see that the fractured geometry is flowing in the negative z direction towards the wind as you can see uh, what we want now let me just connect it to exploded and as you can see yeah we have exploded pieces here okay and all these pieces pieces are from the headphone geometry that we have fractured and all these fractured geometry are separated uh, what we need to do now is we need to connect them back we need to weld them back or stitch them back together uh, so that we can use them in our vellum solver uh, to do that we are going to use a constraint called vellum weld constraint and I'll connect it after the vellum cloth constraint and in the weld constraint just change it to points and if you come to the vellum solver you can see that all the separate pieces are now connected come to the vellum weld constraint and now yeah now you can see that all the separate pieces are connected and they are joined back they are welded together now okay so first we had fractured the geometry and now we need to weld them back together because we need to uh, do control fracture okay so as you can see all the points are now connected they are welded back with the weld vellum weld constraint okay so if i now run the simulation um, let me just turn this on vellum solver we can see that the number of points are same and if i now run the vellum solver or run the flipbook let's see what happens Now the flipbook is done and you can see that the vellum solver is running and the cloth is flowing in the negative z direction but they are still connected. This time they are not breaking off and that is because of the weld constraint that we have attached here that we have connected here and this weld constraint is doing its job pretty much okay so now that we have connected our geometry with the weld constraint we need to break it and the way we are going to do that is with the help of this breaking threshold here so we will set a breaking threshold and once our uh, simulation geometry crosses that uh, threshold it will break uh, let me set the scale by attribute and we can also set up this attribute called uh, break threshold scale uh, which will also help us break the separate the fractured geometry okay so what i'm going to do now is create an attribute let me just first turn this off i'll create an attribute adjust float and here we are going to create our break threshold scale which i'll paste and this attribute break threshold scale uh, let me just visualize this and you won't be able to see it as in my previous session i had changed the values so let me just make it zero and i'll turn it one so minimum value is zero and maximum is one and now i'll change the operation to set always pattern type to noise and now you can see that the value is running from 0 to 1 so we have a breaking break threshold scale of 0 to 1 and that break threshold scale would get uh, multiplied with the threshold which is 0 0.1 so let me just make it 
even lower 0 0.0005 and this way the breaking threshold scale the break threshold scale attribute that we have created which is running from 0 1 will get multiplied with our threshold which is quite low okay and wherever the threshold is 0 it will break and wherever wherever the threshold is 1 it will stay steady okay now i'll change the element size to something lower 0 0.71 so we cover a lot more area and there's a lot more difference we have 0 and 1 values in the whole geometry i'll make it a bit sharp uh, because i want some contrast here um, maybe i'll bring this point to 0 0.5 or no, maybe 0 0.36 and make another point here so this is a lot more sharp a lot more contrasty and uh, now we have a zero and one value here and as you can see in the weld this break threshold scale will get multiplied with our threshold which is 0 0.0005 so wherever the value is zero it will multiply by that threshold value and it will be zero and wherever the value is one it will give us the value 0 0.0005 so to balance this uh, we need to properly change our break threshold scale attribute values okay we want the whites to do not break away and we want the blacks to break away and they will get multiplied by the threshold so we need to change the values here I'll change it to 1 and 1000 because let me just change the values here as well so that we can visualize this 1 minimum value and 1000 as the maximum value now when it get multiplied with the break threshold the whites will not break and the black areas will torn apart okay so let me just come to our smooth shaded area here and okay this is looking nice let me just turn that to gray and yeah okay this is looking nice and i'll just make a flip book here Okay, so we have our flip book ready and as you can see all the black areas are breaking away let's just move this yes all the white areas are staying in their place they are not breaking away they are not getting affected with the wind but uh, everything else is okay the black areas are just falling apart and that is what we wanted and that is what we achieved with the break threshold scale attribute okay that attribute got multiplied with our break threshold and that's how we controlled our breaking parts. So